history spans more than half a century, from a service unit in the 50s, to a department offering agricultural communication in the 60s. In the 70s, Dr. Nora C. Cabral articulated the concept of development communication in her seminal paper. Eventually, we became the Department of Development Communication. The department grew into an institute in the 80s and into a full-fledged college in the 90s. Over half a century, CDC has transformed itself from a small service unit into an international center of excellence in development communication. CDC is the world's only academic institution that offers Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and Doctor of Philosophy programs in DEVCOM. Our BS DEVCOM program follows a generalist curriculum. We equip our undergraduates with the knowledge and skills in four key competencies. These are media-based learning systems, reportage, multimedia design, production and management, and management and communication of technical information. On the other hand, our MS and PhD programs provide graduate students a more solid grounding on DAVCOM theory and practice. Through these curricular offerings, we train our students to apply communication theories, principles, and techniques enabling them to become DEVCOM champions of planned social change. As a college of a national research university, we spearhead research efforts in DEVCOM in line with the university's growth areas, niches, and transdisciplinary programs. Our research and extension agenda focuses on current issues that matter. We communicate the knowledge we have generated through publications, foremost of which is the Philippine Journal of Development Communication. As a testament to the college's quality of research, our staff and students regularly present their papers and transdisciplinary national and international conferences. These activities play a crucial role in building up knowledge on the science, theory, and practice of DEVCOM. CDC balances scholarly work and practice by extending its expertise through partnerships with various stakeholders. The college is home to Radio DZLB, which airs development-oriented programs to a large part of Calabarzon. Meanwhile, CDC regularly publishes the Los Baños Times, a community newspaper that serves Los Baños and nearby communities. We have also ventured into TV production with Dito Sa Laguna, a discussion program aired on the community cable Vision Corporation. Through the Adopt a School program, CDC helps improve the teaching and learning process in selected public elementary schools. Aside from these in-house programs, our experience of more than 50 years has enabled us to render numerous public service initiatives. All in all, our extension activities are geared toward providing DEVCOM services to the community through various communication approaches and media. The college continues to upgrade its facilities to provide students with the intensive training on the interface of various communication media. More notably, we have upgraded some of our classrooms into multimedia laboratories. Through these facilities, our students are able to build a competent portfolio of DEVCOM outputs, which they prepare in coordination with partner agencies and communities. Meanwhile, our student organizations hold relevant DEVCOM-oriented activities for the college, university, and select communities. With the rigorous training we provide our students, it is no surprise that many of our alumni have made significant contributions in their respective fields.
As a matter of fact, the Commission on Higher Education has recognized us three times as a center of excellence for our distinctive efforts in DEFCOM instruction, research, and extension. Moreover, our BS DEFCOM program passed the ASEAN University Network Quality Assurance Accreditation. This means the program adheres to international standards and is at par with similar programs offered by other leading ASEAN universities. Such recognition all the more fuels our pursuit for distinctive excellence as we continue to study and practice development communication. Molding young minds, creating new knowledge, sharing our expertise. Welcome to the College of Development Communication. Tantan 
tungkol sa ansi ni sila mga batang misal. Mama may yung pagulad ang hangad mga pangarap na istilang matupad. Kaya tara na, sumama ka na, manood, makinig, tumuto ka na. Dito sa Laguna, dito sa Laguna. Dito sa Laguna, tayo ay sama-sama. Matuto sa ating kwento, magulay na Molding young minds, creating new knowledge, sharing our expertise. This is what we do at the UP Los Banos College of Development Communication. The College of Development Communication, or CDC, is home to a vibrant community of learners and educators. As the first institution to offer curricular programs in DAVCOM, we are the world's pioneer in the field. Our history spans more than half a century, from a service unit in the 50s, to a department offering agricultural communication in the 60s. In the 70s, Dr. Nora C. Cabral articulated the concept of development communication in her seminal paper. Eventually, we became the Department of Development Communication. The department grew into an institute in the 80s and into a full-fledged college in the 90s. Over half a century, CDC has transformed itself from a small service unit into an international center of excellence in development communication. CDC is the world's only academic institution that offers Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and Doctor of Philosophy programs in DEVCOM. Our BS DEVCOM program follows a generalist curriculum. We equip our undergraduates with the knowledge and skills in four key competencies. These are media-based learning systems, reportage, Multimedia Design, Production and Management, and Management and Communication of Technical Information. On the other hand, our MS and PhD programs provide graduate students a more solid grounding on DAVCOM theory and practice. Through these curricular offerings, we train our students to apply communication theories, principles, and techniques enabling them to become DEVCOM champions of planned social change. As a college of a national research university, we spearhead research efforts in DEVCOM in line with the university's growth areas, niches, and transdisciplinary programs. Our research and extension agenda focuses on current issues that matter. We communicate the knowledge we have generated through publications, foremost of which is the Philippine Journal of Development Communication. As a testament to the college's quality of research, our staff and students regularly present their papers in various national and international conferences. These activities play a crucial role in building up knowledge on the science, theory, 
and practice of DAVCOM. CDC balances scholarly work and practice by extending its expertise through partnerships with various stakeholders. The college is home to Rajo DZLB, which shares development-oriented programs to a large part of Calabarzon. Meanwhile, CDC regularly publishes the Los Baños Times, a community newspaper that serves Los Baños and nearby communities. We have also ventured into TV production with Dito Sa Laguna, a discussion program aired on the community cable Vision Corporation. Through the Adopt a School program, CDC helps improve the teaching and learning process in selected public elementary schools. Aside from these in-house programs, our experience of more than 50 years has enabled us to render numerous public service initiatives. All in all, our extension activities are geared toward providing DAFCOM services to the community through various communication approaches and media. The college continues to upgrade its facilities to provide students with the intensive training on the interface of various communication media. More notably, we have upgraded some of our classrooms into multimedia laboratories. Through these facilities, our students are able to build a competent portfolio of DEVCOM outputs, which they prepare in coordination with partner agencies and communities. Meanwhile, our student organizations hold relevant DEVCOM-oriented activities for the college, university, and select communities. With the rigorous training we provide our students, it is no surprise that many of our alumni have made significant contributions in their respective fields. As a matter of fact, the Commission on Higher Education has recognized us three times as a center of excellence for our distinctive efforts in DEFCOM instruction, research, and extension. Moreover, our BS DEFCOM program passed the ASEAN University Network Quality Assurance Accreditation. This means the program adheres to international standards and is at par with similar programs offered by other leading ASEAN universities. Such recognition all the more fuels our pursuit for distinctive excellence as we continue to study and practice development communication. Molding young minds creating new knowledge, sharing our expertise. Welcome to the College of Development Communication. Good afternoon, everyone. So before we start our forum, just a few reminders. Upon entry, your audio will be automatically turned off. Please turn off your videos as well while the forum is ongoing. Reminder to observe proper netiquette while in the Zoom meeting. So avoid using offensive and discriminatory language. If you have questions for our speakers, kindly send them through the Zoom chat. However, if you are watching through our YouTube channel or YouTube account, you can send in your questions through the comment section. Make sure to indicate your name, affiliation, and to whom your question is addressed. We will open the Zoom chat for questions after each speaker. And our speakers will answer your questions during the open forum. Today's event is also live streamed via the CDC's YouTube account. It's at bit.ly slash speaking of DevCom 2020. If you want to post anything about today's event on social media, please use the hashtag, hashtag speaking of DevCom 2020. At the end of the forum, you will receive an email with the link to an evaluation form to the survey. So kindly accomplish the evaluation form to receive your certificate. To formally begin our program, we, would, we have Lindy de las Reyes Jr. to lead us with the invocation 
and Rizel Germain Monteposo to lead us in the singing of the national anthem. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your unconditional love that endures beyond our understanding. We glorify you for giving us the strength in our individual battles, allowing us to see your beauty more than anything else. You alone are worthy of all our praises. Father, we come to you today with our humble hearts as we confess all our sins to you. Set our hearts, O Lord, for your glory. Lord, there are a lot of things to thank you for, but today we thank you for your unending grace that renews our hearts. Thank you for your endless love in each of us. Lord, thank you for everyone here today. Thank you for allowing us to hold this event amidst of the uncertainties of this time. We ask you to guide us to be able to achieve our goals in this event. Lord, guide the individuals who are tasked to discuss essential information for batch 20. May you give everyone knowledge and the strength for today. This we pray. of the College of Development Communication led by Dean Maria Stella Citirol, CDC faculty, reps, and staff, students, alumni, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and a virtual welcome to all of you. Welcome to Speaking of DevCom 2020, Conversations with DevCom's Finest. I am Renz Francis D. Abagat, and I am very honored to be your host for today's special event. Now, to virtually welcome us all to this momentous occasion, we would like to call on our Dean, Dr. Maria Stella Citirol. Let us give Montea a virtual round of applause. A very warm welcome to all as we celebrate our 102nd Loyalty Day and Alumni Awarding Ceremony. Today, we honor two CDC alumni for their exemplary achievements in development communication. This is also the first time that we will honor our alumni awardees via Zoom and YouTube live stream of our event, Speaking of DevCom, Conversations with DevCom's Finest. This event combines the recognition program for our alumni awardees and their sharing of their experiences as DevCom practitioners. We have been holding this event for almost four years. Speaking of DevCom is a yearly opportunity where we meet our finest professionals as they take us on a journey to appreciate and understand how they practice development communication in the real field. Our alumni awardees will speak straight from their heart and mind about situations, challenges, and situations or solutions in DevCom. These are experiences that we cannot find in textbooks. Hopefully, 
This talk will inspire us to become the best professionals in our field. CDC has already recorded a series of videos of our conversations with our alumni awardees. We have been recording this event with the hope that we will be able to publish a book on DevCom experiences. And this book will hopefully serve as reference material for students, teachers, and practitioners of DevCom. Dr. Nora Kebral, whom we fondly call the mother of DevCom, always believed that DevCom is an evolving field. This means that through the years, we can add, modify, or expound on DevCom concepts and skills. Development communication aims to achieve positive change in society by unleashing the potential of humans and also strengthening their human capacities so that they will be able to improve their lives and their way of life as well. Recently, we linked DevCom to concepts such as participation, dialogue, equity, social justice, sustainability, inclusiveness, resiliency, and gender sensitivity, among others. Let us listen to DevCom's finest and gain from the lessons that they will share with us this afternoon. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Otacio Gravoso and Ms. Maria Mucha Frio, our 2020 CDC alumni awardees. I would also like to thank our faculty members and staff headed by Mr. Elijah Jesse Pine for organizing this special event. Mabuhay ang DevCom. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul Dean Kea, for that warm welcome. We are looking forward to our speakers' uh, inter uh, inspirational talks. So let me introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is a dedicated and hardworking DevCom educator, researcher, and practitioner. He is a full-time professor at the Visayas State University and has led and mentored educators, researchers, and students in various DevCom research and extension projects and activities that have benefited farmers and other marginalized Filipinos in the Visayas and other parts of the country. He was a recipient of exemplary VSU Academician and Researcher Awards and has also served for two terms as the president of the Association of Development Communication Educators and Practitioners Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our first speaker and distinguished alumnus in Development Communication Education, Dr. Rotasio S. Gravoso. Let us all give him a virtual round of applause. Thank you very much, Sis. Uh, I'd like to say good afternoon to Dr. Um, Maria Stella Taya Terol, the Dean of the College of Development Communication of UPLB, my fellow alumni of DevCom, my colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm very glad to have uh, to, to, to receive this award. I'm so humbled by this award. And let us start this conversation and let us do away first with scholarly type of conversation and let's talk from the heart. Let me start by introducing myself. As what I've been said, I teach development communication courses at the Visayas State University, both at the undergraduate and graduate levels. Kindly move. Next slide, please. Okay, yeah, as what I've said, I teach development communication courses at the graduate and undergraduate uh, levels. And my focus now is on communication research and educational communication. Next slide, please. I also do research. And here, for example, we are interviewing farmers on how they cope with the impacts of climate, uh, climate extremes. And uh, aside from, from climate change, we are drawing um, research on, I'm a participant, I'm a team member of our project on forest and landscape restoration funded by the Australian government. Uh, we are also doing research on media literacy and we are uh, developing some mechanisms on how to improve, how to facilitate 
the strengthening, strengthening of research capability of our DevCom uh, educators. Next slide, please. Yeah, and here, as what I have said, we are doing some extension activities. And uh, here, for example, we are doing a planning workshop with the farmers on how they can develop their, their capacity, their adaptive, adaptive capacity, so that they will be able to cope with the uh, changing climate. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I would like now to talk about what makes DevCom a fulfilling job, at least from my, my, my point of view, from my perspective. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, here at DevCom, I think I will not be able to experience, I would not have experienced this had I not taken DevCom. Uh, I was given the opportunity to visit historical places and of course, learn the culture of the people. For example, when I went to Baguio for the 2016, ADSEP conference, that was the, my first time to experience this Bindian, Bindian dance, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, this is in the Benguet State University. So that's a great opportunity. And just last year, when we had the ADSEP conference in Marawi and in Iligan City, we were able, I was able to, well, we were able to get the perspective from our Muslim brothers and sisters and their dreams and their desire actually to have peace, I mean, to, to attain peace in Mindanao. And, uh, this is beyond what other people tell us. This is beyond what, uh, what the media is telling us. At least we were able to experience firsthand what, our, what the ideals of our Muslim brothers and sisters are. Next, Next slide, please. Okay, um, in 2012 to 2013, I had the opportunity to uh, get the postdoctoral program, postdoc, postdoc fellowship at, in Belgium. And I stayed at the Catholic uh, Universiteit in Leuven, and you would notice here, for example, in the, in the left side, your left side, that's the old city hall of Leuven. Leuven is one of the cities in Belgium. And you would notice here when I, when I walk through, through this street, I seem to be a part of the movie. If you have watched The Man in the Iron Mask, because the buildings in that movie and this building here are, are similar. Well, I had the opportunity to interact with the researchers and professors of KUL and visit some historical places also in Belgium. And this the one, for example, is the Rivenstein Castle in Ghent. And talking about Ghent, um, I, we went to a place where Rizal stayed, and they have acknowledged this, that Rizal stayed here and about in the next block, that is where the printing press, where Noli Mitanghere was printed. And so I would like to say that even Europeans also honor the Filipinos. Next slide, please. Okay, um, I also had the opportunity to meet and establish network with researchers and acad uh, academics, uh, people in the academia. And, um, here, for example, in the, in the 2018, our first international conference, we had the opportunity to, to meet and to talk, to converse with our guests, our, our plenary speakers who are leaders who are scholars, who are writing books, who are authors, and who are doing research in, in communication and uh, communication for social change. And by the way, when I talk about ADCEP, I would like to, I would like to say that ADCEP, or the Association of Development Communication Educators and Practitioners, Philippines, is a creation of UPLB CDC, uh, talking about PAM, about PROMEL, and other people of, well, to them, that they have uh, that they have given birth, that they have developed, that they have organized this ad set. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide, please. Um, yeah, um, aside from, from people in the, communication, in the communication field, I also have the opportunity to work with forest scientists, I mean, forestry scientists. Here, for example, in, in 2018, we were in Tacloban with the forest and landscape uh, that's Forest and Landscape Restoration Task Force to talk about some standards on how to measure uh, how to measure impacts, how to measure outcomes of forest and landscape restoration initiatives. And these were these are people from from Europe, from the U.S. And then this was followed by a national or international conference on forest landscape restoration in Manila. Next, please. Another another reason why DevCom is so fulfilling is that there is now a recognition of the value of DevCom. For example, in, in that forest and landscape restoration projects and, and in uh, various forestry 
projects in the, at VSU. I'm always a part of it since 2004 or 2005 after I did my PhD. Uh, we work in the uplands. We work with, with communities who are so far away from, from the central, from, I mean, from, let us say, from, not that generation, but who are so far away. We are uh, away away from the transportation facilities, from social, from social services, even from health. But anyway, we are so glad because uh, by working with them, you are able to realize that this is what is meant by development and this is where development communication should be. Uh, talking with them, for example, about their dreams, about, about the changes that they would like to have in their, in their lives uh, is also very, very rewarding. And so well, here, for example, um, while, while other people would say that value of DEVCOM or Dev, DEVCOM is not, is not valued in their, in their localities or in their fields, in their offices, in their organization, here, for example, we are so grateful that they are starting to, to value uh, the importance of development communication. Next slide, please. Next, please. Okay, um, we also have, I have the opportunity to learn new things. You know, um, education does not stop or does not only happen in the four wall classroom or in, in any classroom. But here, uh, there is what you call um, a uh, learning, even outside that, I, everyone should love learning. And here, for example, I had the opportunity to participate in, in the, uh, John DeLon Memorial Fellowship for on Research Management in Australia. This is funded by the Australian Center for International Development. Here we had a lot of exposure, risk exposure on how Australian government manage and implement research, how they plan and how they communicate. Most importantly, how they communicate what they say for, for scientists and for the communities. Um, this is part of the lifelong journey that I'm into. Next slide, please. Okay, um, in 2018, well, uh, courtesy of my of, of VSU, I was sent to Bangkok for, for a training on the assessment of, well, curricular programs uh, to get to know about the ASEAN University Network uh, accreditation mechanisms. And this is very, very, very important because here at VSU, we also are dreaming like UPLB, we also are dreaming to become a part of the AUN. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, here we are so grateful that we, after my PhD, we were, we were, how do you call it? We, had, we took the initiative to develop a training program, a capability development for researchers. And here we do um, workshops, training workshops on, on research and more importantly on publication. Publication, we anchor this, this activity of the fact that um, in the Philippines, while we are taking pride in being able to talk and write English well, we are actually lagging behind in terms of uh, publication performance. And so we said that uh, uh, perhaps it's time for us to, to develop a program where we can convert uh, people in the university who consider themselves as ordinary classroom teachers into researchers and as authors. And we are so glad that uh, we are uh, trying, I mean, we are starting to, to achieve this, this goal. One example is that a faculty member here at in Croatia, she said that uh, she was not able, uh, she was not anymore required to take a, a scientific writing course in the university in Croatia because of her publication. And we, she attributed that publication to the workshop that she participated, to our workshop that she participated in before she worked, before she left for Croatia for her PhD. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, we, I am so grateful again to, to ADCEP, to the, to the group, to the team of PAM, the group, the team of, of Romel, uh, because with, with our association of development communication, the ADCEP, we are now considered as a strong partner, a good partner of CHED in terms of curricular, curriculum development and reform. So we are always consulted, consulted. We always participate in, in, in planning and in revision of, of curriculum, uh, at, be it at the, at the undergraduate level or at the graduate level. And so we are so grateful about this. And not only that, next slide, please. Beyond the recognition, next slide. 
beyond the recognition here in the Philippines, we are also recognized internationally. For example, in 2018, we, Pamela and I, were in Korea for the, as, for the Asia Journalism and Mass Communication Forum. And in, in the, the following year, this is, I think, in 2017, and in 2018, I was invited to go to Beijing, China, for another conference of the ASEAN Communication uh, Network. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, here at VSU, we are doing multitasking beyond teaching. We are assigned to do administrative uh, tasks to, uh, where we are asked, we are required to, to perform said administrative functions. For example, before my, I, I'm on sabbatical leave today and this, this year, 2020, before my leave, I was assigned as head of three offices International Affairs, Continuing Education Center, and the Online Program Office. And well, uh, because of that, we have, yeah, we are able to take on leadership roles and we are, we are so happy to, to contribute to the growth of the university. And uh, also, we are, I, I'm assigned, I mean, we, because of our proposal, we are able to take leadership roles also in research and in extension projects. One example is, when we were awarded with a like 2 million from CHED to study on the probability or the possibility to amalgate, to, uh, to put out one university for Eastern Visayas. But uh, uh, we recognize, I mean, we were informed that amalgamation is part of the roadmap of, of the Commission on Higher Education. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, an opportunity here at VSU, it's, I think if I were, if. Had I not taken DevCom, I wouldn't be here at VSU. And it's always very, very nice to work here because of our environment and the amazing people that you are, that you are working with. Uh, for example, here, VSU, we are considered as uh, academic acropolis by uh, Dr. Fernando Bernardo, our first president. And by the way, thank you, UPLB, for sending him here. Dr. Bernardo is the, was the dean of the College of Agriculture before he left for VSU. But anyway, uh, it's very nice to work here. As a matter of fact, uh, this is considered as a research university and the Department of Tourism listed VSU as part of the tourist destination in this country. Next slide, please. And we have, we are doing some innovations here at the department. At this time, we are dreaming to become an institute of DevCom, courtesy of course of the challenges of our professors where uh, Dr. Floor, for example, Dr. Alex, Alexander Floor in our discussion in 2018 during the International Conference of ADCEP at, in, in UPLB said that, but sana matagal na kayong naging institute and we are now taking that challenge. At this time, we, ha we have developed, we have, we have started developing the proposal and there are a list of requirements that we still have to comply with. Um, we are hoping that very soon, we will be awarded with that uh, status as Institute of Development Communication here in the Visayas. And if we do, I think we will be the first to be the Institute of DevCom in Eastern or even in, in, in Visayas or in Eastern Visayas. Okay, at this time, again, our part of the big dream, part of our big dreams, actually, uh, we would like to put up a special issue of development communication on the Annals of Tropical Research. Uh, Annals of Tropical Research is the scientific journal of, v, of VSU, and this is this is enjoying this, uh, the international status. And we are hoping that we will be able to do that. As what I have said, um, we are engaging, uh, we are engaging uh, our students, our young faculty members in research and publications writing. For example, in, in, in some of our projects, we ask our students, we encourage our students to, well, you can, you can do this research, you can do this research and then this will be funded by, by this project if you do this, okay? so. Uh, they don't anymore have to think about money. They don't anymore have to think about so much of logistics, but they only have to think about the, create, the creative part of their thesis or of their projects. Next slide, please. Okay, um, we, well, <laughs> uh, we are now recognized by our peers and, and groups. For example, in my case, uh, I'm enjoying, uh, as what I've said, I'm very much humbled by this award, Distinguished Alumnus, Alumnus Award from CDC. And, uh, in 2014, I think I was the first uh, person from the social sciences who got this exemplary research performance award from VSU. Traditionally, or through the years, uh, the awardee comes from the biophysical sciences. And in 2014, 
uh, we were able to break it. And so I think, yeah, based on records, based on, on the information, based on my knowledge, I am the first to get that award from the social sciences. Next slide, please. Okay, another, another thing that makes me high, that makes me high as a DevCom practitioner, as a DevCom educator, is to find uh, achievements of our students. Let me just show you the range of job opportunities and the range of awards, the, the range of achievements that our students have. Um, we have uh, people in Singapore doing some English, I mean, yeah, uh, English tasks or managing uh, English programs. Uh, we have people uh, serving as chairs or leaders in, in the communication programs in their respective universities. And I would like to highlight to you that we have a graduate who is now serving as the acting director, acting director for labor, uh, laboratory services of Pudilla. And of course, of course, he took up some law courses. But the fact remains that we, we have this graduate. And, uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, uh, some, of, of some of the fine achievements of our students, and everyone perhaps would recognize um, Dr. Annabel Perona, uh, who got the uh, Academic Excellence Award from UPL, UPLB. Uh, we also have graduates who are into business, and these fine achievements of our students move me, move me more, and they serve as inspiration for us to work for more. And that's why, sabi nga po nila, the reward for good work is more work. And so we are rewarding ourselves. If these are good work for us, if this, these are good work, then we reward ourselves with more work. And that's why I would like to say that these fine achievements of our students move us more. Next slide. Okay, what are the challenges of, in being a DevCom, uh, DevCom practitioners or DevCom educator? Okay, please. Well, number one, everyone experiences this. And this is the pandemic that's preventing us from undertaking our several activities in the field, especially those in, in the field. Uh, for example, we would like to, to travel, we would like to gather data, we would like to interview farmers, we would like to implement our extension projects, we would like to get there in the uplands. However, the lockdowns are preventing us from going. So we are resorting to, to, uh, like, to activities like this, uh, virtual uh, programs, virtual meetings, vir virtual uh, what else? Virtual class. However, our poor connectivity serves as a challenge. And I think everyone could relate to this. It's good now that here at DevCom, we are near the computer office. So we can just call them up and then uh, provide their assistance. So these are the two. Another one, please. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, well, we are <laughs> loaded uh, heavily. We have heavy workload, workload here. And as a matter of fact, before I think, before my sabbatical leave, I, my workload was 76 workload units. But anyway, we're so happy because as what I have said, uh, we're not, not so, <laughs> as what I have said, it's so, so pleasant to work in VSU because sometimes we just, you just have to treat yourself that, uh, you just have to think that work may not be work at all, but this is just a part of the game and this is part of, of your life. And of course, uh, we are suffering this problem that there's less, less interest of our students in DevCom as a field of endeavor. We have experienced this, like for example, because of our entrance exam now, because of our, uh, yeah. They would put DevCom there in there as part of their choice, like one or two. But actually, because we conduct interview before they are admitted as a full-fledged um, student of DevCom, they would tell us that actually I just put DevCom because there were there are no more choices. Uh, that's the last. I would like to become a teacher. I would like to. I would have loved to take up engineering, but because uh, there were no other vacant programs, wala na pong bakante. So yung bakante na lang po is DevCom. Kaya inilagay na lang po namin ang DevCom as a first choice. But actually, according to them, that is not our our choice. And we have a number of cases like this. And so uh, for me, I have concluded that there is now less interest of students in development communication, probably because uh, bago sa kanila, o kaya, kasi popular, more popular ang MASCOM, but anyway, uh, we are going to work on that. Okay, um, what is the future of DEVCOM and uh, how, could, how could we play, okay? As what I've said, we have proven that the pandemic has proven that DEVCOM 
is very necessary. Not, not because we are so grateful because of this pandemic, no. Um, I'm, I'm not saying that, but anyway, in, in times like this, uh, that uh, communication is very necessary. Even before, in the, in, when, when we started experiencing climate change in environmentalism, we have proven that communication is very, very important. But at this time, at this pandemic, I think we can, uh, our DevCom students, for us, we can serve as volunteers for LGUs in implementing their, their communication activities. And also perhaps now because of the uh, teachers, we don't anymore have classes. We have the blended learning or in the universities or in higher education, we call that flexible learning. Perhaps for there are, there are communities like in the upland that the parents have limited education, like they have only grade five or grade six and it's, uh, or second year high school. And so they really have difficulty understanding the lessons. If, there's a way for us, especially students, using our talents, using our communication skills. If we can serve as volunteers to tutor these kids, I think that would be very, very, um, that, that would help a lot. And uh, yeah, uh, reaching out our students, especially those in the rural communities and the uplands and even in coastal communities, the seemingly unreachable, unreachable communities. I think it's time for us now to develop some innovative uh, mechanisms for us to be able to reach out these communities. Next, please. Okay, uh, what advice could I give to myself when I was still starting? Uh, well, very, very simple, because music is language of the soul and music is the universal language. I will tell myself then, I would have told myself that we have only have to learn by heart the song by Garth Brooks, The River. Uh, some part of the lyrics is, part, is, is on the screen of the TV. Okay. Um, next slide, please. And what are the valuable the, the lessons that I learned uh, through the years of practicing or serving as professor, teacher, and development communication? Next slide, please. Next, please. Okay. Okay. One. Well, uh, books would tell us this: that behavior change does not does does not happen overnight. It, it's it is a process. Really, it's really a process. Like it takes several months. Uh, we are, for example, developing, I mean, we would like to our, our farmers, our upland farmers to, to use or to, to adopt the best management practices in nursery to produce high quality seedlings so that the trees, the tree seedlings that they are planting that in, in, their, in their contract reforestation or in their reforestation project, the, uh, the survival rate will be higher. But uh, very, very simple technologies, but there are, well, there are people who adopt and we are so happy but there are also other people that they are not, they, they are not, they just seem to ignore us. Uh, the reason perhaps is that, well, according to them, it's, it's laborious, but actually, well, it's good now that other farmers are saying, no, it's not laborious, but this is very, very important because if we plant these kind of trees, we raise the, these trees, the survival rate is higher. And so we are actually profiting. And local partners, so I'm, I'm talking about the farmers or the fishermen that we are dealing with, uh, may not be able to, to trust us during our first meeting, but with our dedication, their, their minds will change. I mean, they, if they see that we are developed, that they are, that we are dedicated in our work, that we are dedicated to help them, they will develop their trust in you. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, well, this is an experience that colleagues, well, I would like to highlight some, sometimes uh, from process. They will not perhaps listen to you, but this is in our case. I, I feel that before, wala, wala ang devcom. But when we started to publish, when we started to, to, yeah, to be active in research and we have shown the results, then people have started, started to listen to us and they, we have gained respect. And that's my important advice for, for people who are just starting is we write, we, we conduct research, we gather data, we analyze, we write, and then we publish. And that's a good way for us to gain recognition and for us to be able to gain uh, respect from other people. Next slide. Next, please. Okay, uh, of course, we are now, we are now witnessing the karaoke age. Uh, I think one of the best ways, especially those working in the rural communities, we have to learn one or two songs for us to be in, just to be in, regardless of the age group we are working with. And I'm not saying that we monopolize the microphone, but 
being able to be in because that and, and to be with them in their happy moments, their happy days, I think that's very, very important. At, and so, uh, mahirap naman kasi pag nasa gilid ka lang, magkakantahan na nag-video, okay na. Siguro makaparticipate naman lang tayo, kahit isa o dalawa lang. At then, masasabi nila, ah, okay siya. Oh, uh, he belongs or she belongs to us. Next slide. Okay, thank you very much and I hope I was able to give justice to, to this uh, conversation, to this uh, engagement, to this conference, and I would welcome comments and suggestions later on. Again, from VSU, good afternoon and mabuhay. Thank you very much for this award. Thank you very much, for Sir Rotasho, for sharing your experience in development communication beyond teaching and education. Siyempre kasama dun yung research and extension. And at the same time, yung advice ni Sir, we have to learn by heart. At saka medyo may konting fun da. Ayan. Thank you so much po, Sir, for sharing your experience. Thank you. So our chat box on Zoom is now open for questions. So if you have questions for Dr. Rotasho, you may send them through the Zoom chat. However, uh, Sir Rotasho will answer it during the open forum. We will close the we, we we will close the chat after the intermission and we will reopen it again after our second speaker. So moving on with our program, uh, before we call on our next awardee and speaker, let us listen to a short intermission number prepared by Quincy Jimenez. I love the novella. To the moon, and let me play upon the stars. Won't you let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars? In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song, and let me sing. You are all I long for, I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Fly me to the moon and let me play upon the stars. Won't you let me see what spring is like? On Jupiter and Mars In other words Hold my hand In other words Darling, kiss me Fill my heart with song And let me sing forevermore You are all I long for I worship and adore the words please be true in all the words I love you yeah and thank you very much Quincy oh, na nag, nag enjoy po ba kayo sa kanyang short intermission. And so before we call on our next speaker and uh, say a few reminders, basahin ko lang po yung a few comments sa ating YouTube video. Uh, lahat ay saying congratulations to Sir Rotach. Si Miss Samantha Javier sabi niya, virtual support for my ADCEP 2019 co-panelist, Sir Rotach. So lahat po ay nag-congratulate kay sa inyo, Sir. Thank Ayan. you. Yun Thank lang you. po. Ayan. Okay po. So we move on to the next part of the program. So gentle reminders lang po. Again, please turn off your audio and video while the forum is ongoing. And if you have questions for our speakers, kindly send them through the Zoom chat. And again, if you are watching through our YouTube account, you can send in, you can send in your questions through uh, the comment section. So um, if you want to post anything about today's event on social media, please use Hashtag speaking of DevCom 2020. 
Okay? So, uh, let me call on our next speaker. Our next speaker is a DEVCOM specialist in international projects that advanced the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. He has served in the most disadvantaged communities from working in post-conflict recovery as a UN volunteer of the United Nations Development Program in South Sudan to helping the most impoverished communities regain their livelihood in Cambodia. He also facilitated emergency communications projects with World Vision International, and she also help build the capacity of the next generation of development communicators in grassroots organizations in Kenya and local development staff in India. She is currently a writer and an editor for the Food and Agriculture Organization and is a part of a team developing a forestry education curriculum for primary students in Tanzania that will also be eventually rolled out in the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our next speaker, and distinguished alumna in international development communication practice, Ms. Maria Mutia L. Frio. Let us all give her a virtual round of applause. Hi, um, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. A uh, very cold 12 degree morning here from Rome. Um, I'm very pleased when I found out that I was uh, being given this award. So thank you so much for this. Um, Good afternoon po kay Dr. Thea Tirol, uh, our Dean of CDC. I'm so happy for you as well, uh, Ma'am Ma Thea. She was my former professor back in the day. Um, and a pleasant afternoon also to fellow CDC uh, prof uh, uh, um, professionals like kay, uh, my fellow awardee, kay Dr. Ratach. And then to our um, CDC professors, students, and um, graduates, and everyone listening in, uh, tuning in today. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. So um, today I will share with you my experience, what it's like to be out in the field doing international uh, uh, practice uh, in the field of development communication. So what, what exactly do I do? So first of all, um, I develop um, communication strategies and plans for different uh, development projects. Uh, when developing communication strategies, it can be um, I did one for UN uh, Development Program or UNDP for Cambodia, which is the corporate sort of communication strategy. And then also one for UN, UNDP Philippines. I've also done um, communication analysis of a pro malaria elimination project in Cambodia for World Health Organization. So I did analysis of their processes, their approaches, their methodologies, materials, etc., and provided them recommendations. So that's one part of my job. So I also produce um, products like um, I'm writing uh, news and feature stories. Next slide, please. Yes, um, so I do uh, a story gathering in the field. Um, I also write editorials when we don't want to do advocacy like I did for uh, UNICEF Philippines or UNDP Cambodia. Um, I also produce, next slide, please. Uh, videos and photos, of course, for documentation. Um, and I also do media relations. Um, notably last year, media relations, including organizing press conference. Next slide, please. Um, last year, I had the opportunity working with UNICEF Philippines and BBC came to um, the Philippines to do an, uh, um, a story about immunization. So I organized a whole um, the whole shoot, um, including, um, you know, finding, um, coordinating with our partners on the ground, finding people who would want to do a sort of, it was a very sensitive story about immunization and a young mother who lost her baby because she didn't believe in, you know, vaccines. So that was what, that's part of my job also. And also, uh, as mentioned earlier, um, I also do the uh, mentoring and capacity building of you, your next generation of, of DEFCON practitioners. In this photo, this was way back in India. Um, it really, um, you know, when you get to do this, you know, in a different setting where people don't, some of them don't even have communications background, let alone sort of uh, DEVCOM per se. You, you know, it's, it's a challenge, but it's also a very, you know, welcome experience because they're very, very open to, to learning. So you have to sort of speak their language and meet them where they are when you're doing capacity building. 
I also did capacity building for uh, very, you know, young, young mga out of school youth in, in Kenya also. Also very, very basic, but also was a fulfilling thing to do because they were very open to learning. And I've, I've been doing this in various countries um, in Asia and Africa from, um, you know, addressing food insecurity in Senegal with World Vision or addressing, you know, um, writing stories about displaced uh, communities from the armed conflict in Mali. And then the post-conflict recovery in South Sudan, or as I mentioned earlier, um, working with out-of-school youth filmmakers in um, Kenya. And then in my current work, although I am based in Rome, um, the, the modules that we're doing are for primary students in Tanzania on forestry education. So I also worked in India, working for a, a grassroots organization that um, provide education for children with severe disabilities. And then as mentioned earlier also, I, I did um, some work in landmine clearance in Cambodia and malaria elimination. And then of course in the Philippines during my earlier years um, and, and recently with UNICEF with, in agricultural development and um, sustainable development with UNDP Philippines. So my, I, I'm currently based in Rome with a, at the headquarters of the FAO as a writer and medium, multimedia consultant. Um, like I said, um, writing and editing of these um, education modules. So it, it, um, I, we're, I would, we're, we're allowed to go to, to work uh, once a week now, of course, with social distancing and everything, but most of the days I'm working from home. So, so what's what's the most fulfilling part of uh, of my work as a DevCon practitioner doing this in many different countries? It's um, it's it's doing field work actually. It, it because it, it it breaks the routine. It takes you out of the four corners of the room. It 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 makes you forget about the office politics beyond all the uh, perks and privileges of an international staff. Um, it because it reminds you you know why you do what you do and who you're doing it for. Um, that you know the, the the statistics in your annual report actually have a face because you get to meet them. See, no, but mga beneficiaries natin, and you know, meron ba tayo talagang impact sa buhay nila? And you know, as I mentioned in a previous talk, you become part of a uh, uh, positive change in people's lives. And and these are people uh, who are less fortunate, like uh, like in the Philippines. You know, we have a sizable population as well, or living below the poverty line. And especially I've seen in South Sudan, you really one meal a day lang yung nakakayanan nila because they were ravaged with war for two decades. So talagang stunted yung development nila. So it, it's, 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 it, that's the most, you know, fulfilling part uh, of my work. Kasi, you know, and especially if you see that they're really very grateful that, you know, may, you know, your intervention is actually helping them. So, so that's, that's my, uh, so that's the the heart of what I really do makes you know makes me really happy, and um, to segue to what's the most memorable story that I've um, you know I encountered at work, um, there was this so in Senegal because it is in Senegal where the Sahel, where it, it, it's in the Sahel region in West Africa it's notoriously known for droughts. So food insecurity happens uh, annually. So what World Vision did was to set up a vegetable garden for a group of women so that they can till their own vegetables for household consumption and also for selling in the, in the village market. So we visited the, 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 the place, the, uh, the project site. And then, so okay now, we, you know, it was, we, we saw the results, the meron talagang return dun sa, sa group of women. And then, so I was able to write my story. And then, nung papalis na kami, or literally, our, our, our car was already moving, you know, going back to the office. The, the lady at the extreme left, um, humahabol siya, hinahabol niya kami. And then, she had these two huge um, watermelon, you know, on, on both of her arms. And then, she just, and she said, Sista, wait. So, tumikil kami. And then, she was actually giving the, the first fruits, kumbaga, ng harvest nila. She was giving it to us as a sign of thank you. So, talagang, it was really, it was really very touching kasi yung, you, you would think that yung, yung, the thing, yung trabaho na ginagawa mo lang, na, na for them, it's just, it was one of those routine sort of um, days. Pero, it was really very heart, 
uh, warming to see na kahit pala yung whatever they have they would be happy to give you yung yung binigay niya sa amin uh, pwede na nila actually ibenta yun ng mas mahal kasi it was the one of the you know best harvest but they decided to give to give it back to us so that's really very touching so and then um uh, the values and principles naman that i've um that i've uh, you know learned and upheld uh, as a devcom uh, practitioner was it's it's all really it's always about the people um it's um it's beyond all the comms products that we do uh, beyond all the shiny strategies and annual reports beyond the office work um at the end of the day does the project really make any difference in people's lives yung communication intervention ba natin na address yung goals to be able to you know send our messages to them may may change by in their behavior in the the reception of the messages so yun, it, it 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 always is for me the bottom line it's the people and it's meron ba talagang change may positive change pa sa you know in their lives in their families in their communities um I've mentioned before in a previous talk that we as DevCom practitioners are just, uh, you know, our catalysts and with the technical know-how, but the communities and the people must always be um, equal partners. And very close to that uh, principle is that communication is always a process. So, and this is a very basic teaching that you see, you know, you learn in DevCom. It's never about the product. So I'm really sorry because I've encountered so many I've encountered colleagues in various organizations. They always start from the middle and say, medium kagad, social media kagad, or website kagad, or another brochure, another flyer. But it's it, that's not how it works. You have to diba, know your audience first, so you work from there. And then, so when when you when you start to know your target audience first, you you they research kay you do a social demographic demographic profile, you um you study their social norms, ano yung mga acceptable, ano yung mga hindi acceptable, ano yung mga local culture and even subculture, who are your champions in that community and who are adversaries and influencers as well, dun sa microcosm nila, ano yung lifestyle nila. And what medium do they primarily use? And ano yung mga barriers uh, to communication? Like, is it psychology, psychological, or is it um, physical, uh, or infrastructure? So, di ba inaalam mo muna yon? So that's the beginning of the process before you even craft the whole, you know, strategy, the whole plan. So, um, so yon you that's dun yun yung magiging roots mo kung ano madedetermine yung key messages mo. And you need human channels, how to implement it, you, you, you check for noise, distraction, and then you, you evaluate for feedback. So it really is a communication process. So, um, so these are the, the two core val values and principles that I've, um, that I've learned and I'm still upholding. So it's the DevCom effect that I would call that, would, that really, um, next slide please, that really helped me um, in my in my work because these became my solid foundation apart from other um, values and principles but these two that i mentioned earlier were really the the core principles because um, you have to have if you're a devcom practitioner you have to have a deep well to draw your knowledge you know your knowledge and skills from your approaches you trabaho gagawin mo dun sa project and sa community you have to have deep roots um, because that yun yung mga principles that will separate you from other comms discipline with corporate communications or marketing, and you would actually see that in you, you know in, in some organizations I've worked with colleagues, or some are thankfully who speak the same language who understand the DevCom principles, but but some kita mo talaga they don't have that framework, and so um, so yun yung um, yung tinatagong the DevCom effect. And then um, moving on, um, what I see, what I see DevCom today, it's especially with the pandemic, it's 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 very crucial now more than ever, um, to you know for DevCom to um, to make a change because uh, most communication now are um, confined to online because of, you know obviously social distancing etc but so no lying element of um you know interpersonal communication which is in any public health is really really also very very crucial um what i see devcom is heading tomorrow it's it's 
it's going to lean heavily on technology, but it will it still has to stay rooted in new core principles, values, concepts, in theories and models of DevCom, and young lessons learned from other practitioners. So this is how I see um, DevCom today and tomorrow. And then the, um, some of the things that I've learned, um, I wish I had a, a seat at the table in project planning because um, in, in some cases, when they hire me for a project, um, it's already started or parang sort mid midway na. So yung communication component built in na siya. So very little chance for me to influence it. Pero um, throughout the course of implementation, I would see na, ay, sayang pala, we should have done this instead of this. Kasi mas effective, you know, instead of doing like 20,000 national workshops, sana pala mas targeted na lang yung kinuha natin dun sa stakeholders natin. So we could have made an even, you know, a greater buy-in and you know an, an even longer term impact and you know like i said if communication is a process process then the comm specialist must be involved from the very beginning discussing up from from the planning and then on, onwards to implementation and then evaluation and then um yeah lessons <laughs> lessons learned you can't save the whole world which was a sort of a jarring awakening for me um, because, because we, pag mag, nag, um, what do you call this? If, if you do go international and you, I was very idealistic and then something in midway, something happens or may resistance come from the community or even from colleagues. Um, you know, it, it's, you, you still have to find what works and you can't just give up or you can't reroute without consulting new, uh, stakeholders. You know, for example, um, uh, we were planning in South Sudan we were planning to do a campaign on the first 100 days of the president to promote um, peace and reconciliation. Um, ironically, he, we had to shelve it because um, conflict broke out again in some part of South Sudan. So, you know, that was definitely beyond our control. So, there are cases that are really, it could be political, it could be, um, you know, cultural. You know, sometimes, you, you know, these, these behavioral norms supersede good intention so still find what works and I've, I've heard this also from other development practitioners um not only comms uh practitioners uh, in fact there's there's sort of a small movement among international development uh in the international development field uh, that actually is a, it's an organization or a movement called find what works so so those are the key lessons. Another one before I wrap up, um, one of the key lessons that I learned on, um, is, is on empathy. Um, back in with World Vision, we did an emergency communications training and um, this was a simulated um, sort of hospital with actors acting as patients or a BBC correspondent. And then we were to go in to look for a story. And then it was a chaotic um, setup. And then we were distracted by the actors playing, you know, dying patients and a, 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 an actor playing a BBC correspondent filming us live. So there was really great pressure. Ano unahin mo yung branding mo ba o yung tao? We actually failed that um, that exercise because later on our manager told us two of your two of the patients in this hospital died, and one of them died twice trying to get your attention. So eventually, ang um, sabi ang you know the learning there is really still look at the people don't get stuck on your deliverables you know have you know have still have a heart for the people sila yung tinutulungan mo eh. and so eventually um uh, several weeks later i was sent out to the field in mali the the, the photo the, the previous photo of, of the lady with a with a with a baby um she was one of those displaced from the from the conflict in mali so i was trying to interview her but at one point, I had to put my camera and my phone down because she was telling her story, and you just really have to hold her hand because they left without anything, and their future is so uncertain. So you know, always remember empathy. So to to wrap up, um, so all of these places that I've been, all the work that I've done, um, every time I'd go home, um, usually tinatanong sa akin ng you know family and friends, oh, um, hanggang kailan ka dito? Saan ang susunod mo? Um, it's 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 become it before it was just like a lifestyle wow adventure let's go, um, but now I see that it's a calling because you know it, it, I feel like I'm living out my purpose and you know serving other people I don't 
personally believe in, you know, um, borders, if you can do it anywhere, any part of the world, especially in countries that you see that are much, much less developed than the Philippines. So, you know, why not? Why not use your, your you know, your, your knowledge, your skills, your presence in, in even less fortunate um, settings and communities? So that's, um, so that I hope that talk inspired you to do DEFCOM if you have, if you're not doing it yet. Um, so again, pasasalamat ko sa DEFCOM sa, because they, they really trained me in this. They, they're the ones who built the foundation and the roots na talagang nagagamit ko ngayon in, the, in my work. So thank you very much, Bob. Thank you very much din po, Ms. Mutia. Um, again, lagi tayong pinaalalahanan that we have to know our audience always and always. And that it is never about the product talaga. It's about the process. Kailangan, uh, um, our material should go through the whole communication process para po maging mas appropriate siya to our intended audience. Yeah. Thank you very much again, Ms. Mutia, and congratulations po. So one of our students would like to give their response to these inspirational talks given by our distinguished alumni. We'd like to call on Mark Andre Domingo, the chairperson of the CDC Freshman Council. Sa atin pong college din, Dr. Maria Stella Citirol, sa bumubuo ng faculty ng College of Development Communication, sa ating mga panauhin, alumni at sa mga kapwa ko mag-aaral mula sa minamahal nating kolehiyo. Isang pagbati po na mapagpala at magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Siguro isasang-ayon kayo sa akin ng unang hamon sa pagiging isang DevCom student ay ang pagsagot sa tanong na, ano ang DevCom? Marahil yung iba sa atin ay hindi pa rin alam kung bakit nga ba tayo nasa DevCom. Halos isang buwan na ang nakakalipas ng mag-umpisa ang aming pagdalakbay patungo sa aming mga pangarap. Sa aming formal na pagpasok sa panibagong yugto ng aming pag-aaral, batid po namin ang sakripisyo at hirap na aming mapagdadaanan. Magiging mapanghamon din ang paglalakbay na ito, dulot na rin ang hirap ng online class. Ngunit ika nga nila, walang mahirap sa taong may pangarap. Ang pag-aaral sa ilalim ng programa ng Development Communication ay isang malaking karangalan. Karangalan na aming maipagmamalaki at isang karangalan na aming tangan sa pagtugon sa mga isyong panlipunan. Tunay ngang isang isa itong uri ng bukasyon na naglalayo makiisa sa masa at isa buhay ang mga natutunan kaalaman at mga teorya. Napatunayan natin na maraming oportunidad ang naghihintay sa atin bilang mga DevCom practitioners. Nasaksihan naman natin kung gaano karaming bansa ang napuntahan na ni Dr. Rotasio. Gayon din si Ma'am Priyo. Nakaka-excite din po ba? <laughs> Habang nagtatrabaho para sa ilang usapin pang kaunlaran, inakakapag-travel pa tayo. Ika nga ni Dr. Gravoso, the pandemic has proven that DevCom is necessary. Kung may isa mang bagay mula sa manifestasyon ni Sir Rotasio, siguro ito ay ang katagang we only need to learn by heart. Dahil anumang bagay na ginagawa ng may puso ay higit na nagtatagumpay. Nakita rin natin na aktibong partisipasyon ni Mang Frio sa ilang usaping panlipunan hindi lamang sa loob ng bansa, kundi sa iba't ibang parte ng mundo. May pamalas nyo po ang mantra ng ating programa na Serve the People. Naramdaman natin ang kasiyahan sa paglilingkod at pakikipamuhay sa ilan sa mga sektor ng lipunan habang umaalari sa kanila tungo sa kaunlaran. Tunay na magagamit natin ang mga teorya at aral na ating matututunan kapag tayo ay lumabas na sa apat na, silid, apat na sulok ng ating silid. Sang ayon ako kay Mang Frio na isa itong uri ng calling. Kaya naman po mula sa bumubuo ng Freshman Council 2020 at bilang kinatawan ng mga kapwa ko bagong scholar ng bayan mula sa kolehiyo ng komunikasyong pangkaunlaran, nais po namin iabot ang aming pagkilala at pasasalamat kina Dr. Protasio Gravoso at Ma'am Maria Mutia Frio sa pagbabahagi ng kanilang kwento at karanasan bilang isang DevCom practitioner. Sila man po yung patunay na ang DevCom ay hindi lang basta, ay hindi lang basta DevCom. Ito po yung magsisilbing inspirasyon para sa amin na magpatuloy sa paglinang ng aming talento at ang kinkakayahan sa pagsusulat, pakikipamuhay at pagpapahayag upang magbigay ng boses sa mga napag-iiwan ng sektor ng ating lipunan. Pinatunayan niyo po na CDC lang ang malakas. Mabuhay ang UP, mabuhay ang development communication. Muli isang mapagpalat magandang hapon po sa ating lahat.
Maraming salamat, Mark. Grabe naman yon. Ang lalim ng Tagalog at syempre, ano, siguro ang nakuha ko doon, DevCom is necessary talaga. Sa kahit saang field, sa kahit saan sa man tayo pumunta, importante ang development communication. Sana kung meron mang mga freshies na nakikinig at nanonood sa ating Zoom, uh, Zoom call and um, YouTube video, sana mas na-inspire kayo na mahalin at uh, lalong paglinangin ang development communication. Maraming salamat, Mark. Uh, we are also very grateful again sa ating mga speakers na nagbahagi ng kanilang experiences in their um, fields. Meron tayong development communication education and international development communication practice. Maraming salamat po and congratulations ulit, Dr. Rotasha and Ms. Mutia. Ayan. So we are now um, in our uh, we are now in our next part of the program. So we would like to open the floor for questions from our participants and audience, both in Zoom and on YouTube. So again, please feel free to send in your questions, but please don't forget to include your name affiliation and kung kanino po address yung inyong question. So a while ago, during uh, a while ago, meron daw pong nag-private message kay Dr. Rotasha. Sir Rotash, do you want to read and answer please po yung question na privately sinend sa inyo? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Cez. Um, itong question uh, sent by Sheena Lynn Ramos. Thank you so much for this question. Sir, I'm also planning to conduct my thesis focused on citrus farmers here in Nueva Vizcaya. I would like to ask kung... Uh, if what's the greatest challenge you encountered as a DevCom practitioner during field work or the whole duration of your study? Uh, fortunately, or unfor fortunately or unfortunately, um, so I practice na ako when I got into the DevCom profession. Na nagtatrabaho na ako. Wala na mga ano. But there was a sad moment when I was a student. Na nanaka discouraged <laughs> kasi nga yung requirement was more to conduct listenership survey as part of the requirement part of the exercise sa communication research natin. And the people, na yung households, especially yung mga makonkrete ang houses, <laughs> uh, nagre-refuse lang ano, sumagot ng, ng tanaw ng interview. Na, na, it's very, very discouraging. Kaya noon at that time, back in the 80s, sabi ba, nandito kami. But anyway, we just work our way through. Uh, sa, ngayon naman, parang wala. And, and the technique so far that I have gotten is that we just introduce ourselves well, very, very well, and highlight how important the activity is doon sa communities, doon sa mga stakeholders na, na tinatarget natin. Yung mga farmers, yung mga fisher folks. Wala namang, hindi naman magre-refuse. Sasagot naman sila ng maigi as honest as they can. Thank you. I hope I was able to answer the question. Thank you very much po, Sir Rotasho. And we have another question po from John Gerald Navera. So this is addressed to you daw po, sir. Is it possible to have a diploma or associate program or executive classes program about DevCom for public officials for them to apply development and empower their community? So possible daw po ba yun? Uh, who, for, for whom is that? Sorry. I for you po daw, sir. I, yeah, I think so. It's, it's one of the possibilities here at, at VSU, for example. We are discussing that. Um, professional parang uh, yun yung mga practitioners kasi wala naman silang time at saka yung, nag, yung nagre-research yung nasa academia at saka research centers or research organizations sila nangangailangan ng master of science pero yung mga professional studies are needed are, uh, professional degrees are needed by people who are in media or in development organizations I, that's among among the topics that's among the points that we are discussing here in, in TEPCOM sabi ko nga yung mga innovations sa curricular sa curricular po, namin dito. Um, we are hoping to, to come up with a program with a curriculum soon, but I think we are going to work with UPLB also. I, I think this is among, among the things. Uh, I'm, I'm just hoping si Ma'am Sor, uh, Sor Hayla sa MSU Marawi, nakikinig ngayon. And uh, yung mga kasama, kasama ko sa executive committee ng ADCEP, I think in one of our meetings, we have to discuss this too. Okay, this should be a national, a national activity, a national uh, initiative. UPLB at saka, uh, sa VSU, we are, we are very much ready. I mean, we are very much willing to work with, with any organization who would work on this too. Mas maigi kung magsasama-sama tayo. 
Okay, I, I think the question, the, to answer the question, it is possible. Only that we lack the curriculum at this time. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you very much, po, Sir Rotasio. So, uh, meron pong isang question dito for Miss Mutia. Pero before punon, I'd like to read a few parang manifestations from Miss Elvira Pasagi. I am a BS in DevCom graduate who is about to finish my doctor in public administration in PUP Manila. My foundation in DevCom is very vital with my graduate studies in the field of public administration and as well as teaching public ad and political science courses. Sabi niya, once I complete my DPA, I will definitely pursue a doctoral degree in DevCom with the appreciation that our field is indeed very vital in politics, public service, public administration, and even in every field towards attaining everyone's goals and vision. Tama po yan. Thank you, Ms. Elvira. Okay, so we, we now move on po dun sa isang question addressed to Ma'am Mutia. Ma'am Mutia, nandito po ba kayo? Yes, I'm still here. Yes, po. Okay, I'll, I'll read the question po. For Ms. Prio, okay. I am Ms. Makai Quadra, Com Arts graduate from UPLB in the 80s, but mm. doing DevCom work now. What for you are three best practices you can share as a Filipino DevCom graduate working in a development program overseas? Yan po yung question. Okay. First of all, thank you, Makai, for your question. And thank you for moving on to Uncom Arts to DevCom. It's a worthwhile endeavor. <laughs> um, three, some of the best practices, I would say, um, you profile your target audience. Uh, again, at the beginning of the, uh, the communication process. Um, if you could find, you have to have to needs assessment and yung comms barriers nila, like I said earlier, yung uh, social norms, etc. If you could find, you have to make a good case to, to fight for a budget for that you need assessment. Because before I've been involved in a project that, you know, the you know the supervisor, the director did not see that uh, important at all. So if if you know if you could, you really have to profile your target audience first. Because you know, they dictate and lahat ng components ng comms process mo from your key messages to your, to the medium that you will choose to to the the implementation and to the um, evaluation so that's one and and you know as a filipino working overseas devcom a practitioner you know um overseas i learned that you have to discard your um you know your preconceived notions of other cultures um you know just take it as it is when you when you start immersing in their culture because tayo naman filipino you know foreigners coming in to do development work to help us um you will, we also wouldn't appreciate stereotypes so um, you know, just go in there, take it as a you know as a learning, and have a very open mind about you know the differences in cultures and beliefs and in, in lifestyles. So um, and then you know just be just be the Filipino that you know within their myth. And and I've I've met so many Filipinos working in development work that that really they yung na establish nila yung self nila within the community within the. Um, within the organization, na, tal na talagang people have a high regard for them. Kasi siya, wala lang Pilipino na fully doon trabaho. Uh, tsaka yun, huwag yung hindi tapos. So, you know, just uphold those values. Um, so I think, yeah, those are the key, those are the two main, um, you know, at saka, ano ka, eh, well, well, you're a UP grad, you, you know, and you're a Filipino, you, you know, yung... Yung, yung, yung pride in our, in our yun nga, yung values that I said, uh, yun ang dadalhin mo when you're overseas. And, you know, that will, that will tide you through and dun ka rin makikilala din sa mga values na yun. So, I hope that helps. Okay po. Thank you, Ms. Mutia. So, ang tawag dito, um, kailangan culture and values. Yeah. Okay. So, last one po. Um, another manifestation from Ms. Riza Estadola. So as someone working in an international environment organization, I really appreciate the presentation of Ms. Mutia. Sabi niya, it's really refreshing to be reminded and inspired of the importance of communication process, especially in our, adver in our advocacy work in Manila Bay. So ang, ang communication process is not just important in, in, in the international development communication scene, but also, siyempre, sa ating bansa. So that's all po, and thank you very much for answering the questions, Dr. Rotasio and Ma'am Mutia. So we now move on to the next part of our program. So for the awarding of certificates, may we call on our Dean, 
Dr. Maria Estera Citirol and Prof. Romel A. Daya, the President of the CDC Alumni Association for the awarding of certificate. So ako na po ang magbabasa. Maraming salamat, Ces. Babasahin ko lang po yung nakalagay sa certificate. The College of Development Communication, UPLB, and the College of Development Communication Alumni Association present this certificate of appreciation to our awardees for delivering an inspirational talk on development communication practice at Speaking Out of DevCom Conversations with DevCom's Finest, given this ninth day of October 2020, signed by the Dean of the College of Development Communication, Dr. Maria Estela Citirol, and yours truly, uh, the President of the CDC Alumni Association. So we give certificate to Dr. Tasha Graboso, 2020 CDC Alumni Association Distinguished Alumnus for Development Communication Education, and to Ms. Maria Mutia El Prio, 2020 CDC Alumni Association Distinguished Alumna for International Development Communication Practice. Maraming salamat po at kayo po inspirasyon namin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much po, Sir Romel, for uh, reading yung, yung content ng ating certificate. And again, congratulations po to our awardees, Dr. Rotasho and Ms. Maria Mutia Frio. Let us give them a virtual round of applause. You may use the Zoom reactions um, feature po para sa ating applause para sa kanila. Uh, this afternoon po, we are very happy to share with everyone our excitement in the relaunch of our CDC website. We are back online. So head on to, de to devcom.edu.ph. Please watch this video. Thank you so much po. Again, we are back online. You can visit our website at devcom.edu.ph. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng um, nagbigay ng effort to make this possible. Thank you very much po ulit sa ating awardees and congratulations. And now to conclude the event, may we call on Prof. Romel A. Daya, the President of the CDC Alumni Association for his closing remarks. Unang-unang po ay nagpapasalamat ako sa lahat ng dumalo sa webinar or forum na ito, ang mga mag-aaral at guro, mananaliksik, uh, uh, extensionista at kawani ng College of Development Communication. Gayun din po sa mga alumni natin na nandyan ngayon. Kung nasan man, pa, nasan man pong panig kayo ng Pilipinas o ng mundo, ay nagagalak po ako na kayo ay nakasama namin ngayon. Sa mga kapwa UPLB alumni, sa mga kabarkada, kaibigan, uh, kapitbahay at mga kababayan, salamat po sa inyong pagdalo at ipanalangin po natin ang mga guro at uh, practitioners ng DevCom sa iba't ibang panig ng bansa at ng mundo na sana ay magampanan namin, magampanan natin ang ating uh, mga responsibilidad, hindi lamang sa ating sarili at pamilya, hindi sa ating bayan. Salamat pala sa komite na nag-organisa ng Speaking of DevCom sa pangunguna ni uh, Sir EJ Pine at uh, kasama niya dyan si na RJ Galang, uh, si na Renz Abagat, uh, si Sir JM Mbate, si Miss Cha Arkaina, si na Ma'am Hia, si na Ma'am Trina. Uh, at syempre, nagkapasalamat tayo sa College of Development Communication Alumni Association sapagkat uh, kahit pa paano ay uh, malaki, malaking bahagi no, ng pagdiriwang ng ating Loyalty Day, alumni homecoming at itong pagbibigay ng award ay ginagampanan ng CDCAA. At syempre sa pamunuan ng CDC sa pangumunan ni Dean Tea Tirol, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng inyong suporta at uh, sa lahat ng inyong paalala. Uh, salamat sa ating napakasipag na dekana. Pagbating muli sa ating distinguished alumni at uh, naway magsilbi kayong inspirasyon po, hindi lamang sa amin dito sa CDC kung hindi sa ating mga mag-aaral sa iba't ibang panig ng Pilipinas kasi dumarami na po ngayon ang mga uh, eskwelahan o universidad na nag-o-offer ng DevCom programs sa buong bansa. No? At naway dumami pa, 
kumbaga lumalawak ang impluwensya ng DevCom sa ating bansa at tayo nagpapasalamat doon lalo pa ngayon na mayroon na tayong uh, Association of Development Communication Educators and Practitioners Philippines sapagkat uh, naging matatag, naging uh, mas madalas at uh, naging malakas yung ugnayan ng mga DevCom educators sa buong Pilipinas. Gayun din kami ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga practitioners para mas mapaunlad pa natin yung ating larangan ng development communication. At huwag po ninyo makalimutan uh, bukas ang uh, virtual celebration ng alumni homecoming at loyalty day ng buong UPLB. At uh, ito po ay mapapanood nyo sa YouTube, ganun din sa Facebook Live. Uh, tingnan lang po natin yung website ng UPLB Alumni Association at saka ng Office of, uh, of uh, Alumni Affairs ng UPLB at makikita po natin doon yung mga links kung saan natin mapapanood yung virtual celebration ng Loyalty Day 9 to 11 a.m. at saka yung awarding. Makikita po muli natin si Mamutia at saka si Sir Rotach doon sa awarding sa hapon. Ito naman po ay magaganap ng, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, at uh, 2 to 4 or 1 to 3 ng hapon. Um, yun lang po, maraming salamat po muli sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po Sir Romel for that closing remark. So before we end, of course, our Zoom call, may we invite everyone po for a group photo? Let us turn on our cameras. Parang reunion na rin ito. Parang Hi, reunion na rin ta. Turn on your cameras po. Sige po, Ms. Char, po. take it away. Ako, official photographer. Wow. <laughs> Pag Zoom event. So -zoom please turn on your cameras po. Let's see your fresh na fresh na faces. Wow. Yan. Baka po may mga kaklase kayo dyan dati na parte ng ating Zoom ngayon at ngayon lang ulit kayo nagkita-kita. Um, we have a lot of participants, so we will have six, oh sorry, five frames po. So I will just count na lang. And then, um, baka po kasi iba yung view ko sa view ninyo. So smile na lang kayo sa lahat ng frames para sigurado. Alright guys. Um, okay po, ready. Frame. Okay. One, two, three. Another frame. This is the second frame po. Smile, guys. One, two, three. Okay, another frame. This is our uh, third frame po. Hold on. Okay, smile. One, two, three. And then our fourth out of fifth frame. Smile, guys. One, two, three. And then our last frame na po. One, two, three. Three. Thank you. Thank you very much po. Okay. So, we would like to thank everyone who joined us in today's Speaking of DevCom 2020. Again, if you want to share your thoughts or post anything about today's event, kunyari, kung kulang pa ang pagko-comment sa Zoom, kung gusto nyo pang i-post ang inyong thoughts and feelings on Facebook, please don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag Speaking of DevCom 2020. Again, don't forget to accomplish the evaluation form that will be sent to your emails to receive your certificate. Congratulations po ulit to our awardees. And muli ako po si Cess. Magandang hapon po at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Thank you po.